Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be reviewing the Primaris Tech Marine from the Space Marine Codex and how best to use them on the battlefield. So to begin he's going to cost you 4 power or 80 points. Looking into his keywords, he's got a chapter keyword, he's a character, a Primaris model, a Tech Marine and of course an infantry. As for stats, movement 6 inch, weapon skill 3+, plus, ballistic skill 2+, plus, strength 4, toughness 4, wounds 5, attacks 4, leadership 8 and a 2 plus save. So it shoots pretty well with ballistic skill 2 and that 2 plus armor save is really handy. It's got the Angels of Death ability and out of the 4 inbuilt rules, only Shock Assault and Combat Doctrine are going to be used, which I'll touch upon when we get into the weapon section of the review. So he also comes with a couple of more unique abilities, starting with Blessing of the Omnisire. At the end of the movement phase, the model can repair one friendly chapter vehicle model within 3 inches, and that vehicle is going to regain D3 loss wounds, and each model can only be repaired once per turn. So quite similar to an Apothecary, but now you're repairing vehicles. Then he's got Awaken the Machine Spirits, which is in the command phase. The model can awaken one friendly chapter vehicle within 3, then until the start of the next command phase, each time that vehicle makes a ranged attack, add one to the hit roll. Each model can only be awakened once per turn. So really good for your shooty vehicles, all the dreadnoughts, as well as your heavy tanks in particular, are really going to enjoy this ability. Especially those kitted out with tons of weapons like the Redemptor Dreadnought. So on to the weapons then. Now he is a Primaris character, they tend to not have any weapon upgrades. It's probably a way of keeping the firstborn units relevant. So Primaris Tech Marine is equipped with a Forge Bolter, a Grav Pistol, an Omnisign Power Axe, a Servo Arm, a Mechadendrite, and then the Frag and Crack Grenades. So let's check out each of those, starting with the Forge Bolter, which is 24 inch range, Assault 3, Strength 5, minus 1 EP, and the damage is 2. And each time the bearer shoots, it can make attacks with this weapon, even if it has made attacks with pistols or grenades. So it's like a smaller heavy bolter, but being allowed to fire pistols and grenades, which is a nice touch, especially with ballistic skill too. So you've got a reasonable chance of killing a marine model with this weapon, possibly a couple of orc models too, so not a bad weapon. The grav pistol is 12 inch range, pistol 1, strength 5, minus 3 AP and 1 damage. Each time an attack is made with a weapon that is allocated to a model with a save characteristic of a 3+, plus or better, that attack has a damage characteristic of 2 rather than 1. This can be shot alongside the forge bolter as mentioned, and the grav being a nice little extra, whether it's fired against marines or orcs, it's still doing something, but it is only a single shot with 12 inch range. However, it is hitting on 2s and likely wounded on 3s, which is the hard part. The minus 3 AP removes a reliable save, it's a minus 4 in the Assault Doctrine. Now before we look into the melee weapons, I just wanted to display for you the grenade options, as they could see a bit of play due to them being used with the Forge Bolter. The Frag Grenade in particular may be worth using over the Grav Pistol against weak units for those potential extra attacks. So then we move on to the melee weapons. So the first is the Omniscien Power Axe, which is strength plus 2, making it a strength 6, minus 2 AP and the damage is 2. So not a bad marine killing weapon with the minus 2 AP and the damage 2, and of course it goes up to minus 3 in the Assault Doctrine. The second is the Servo Arm, it's strength times 2, making it strength 8, minus 2 AP and the damage is 3. And each time the bearer fights, no more than one attack can be made with the Servo Arm. So unfortunately only one attack here, but it's pretty good at grabbing off any enemy infantry and removing it from the table, and again it'll be minus 3 AP in the Assault Doctrine. The last melee weapon is the Mechadendrite, which is strength plus 1, making it strength 5, no AP and 1 damage. Each time the bearer fights, it makes two additional attacks with this weapon. So this is an additional 2 attacks at Trent 5, a nice bonus, no AP or it is minus 1 in the Assault Doctrine. So the Tech Marine has 4 attacks base, 1 more which you'll likely get for Shock Assault, then add 2 more for the Mechadendrite giving you a total outlay of 7 attacks. And one of them is going to be at Strength 8 with the Servo Arm, with the rest of them being either Strength 5 or Strength 6 depending on the weapon. So you should be killing a couple of Space Marines per fight phase, and again using the example of Alt Boys, you should be clearing 3 or 4 of them. Right, so the Tech Marine does have an upgrade option located on page 99 of your Marine Codex. He can be the Master of the Forge for 20 points or 1 power. So Master of the Forge gives you an ability, which is each time this model repairs a model using its Blessing of the Omnisire ability, that model regains up to 3 loss wounds instead of D3. Pretty sweet as vehicles tend to be high toughnesses anyway, so making your opponent waste a lot of their big guns firing at those vehicles for you to just repair three each time. He then gains access to a new warlord trait and a new relic. So the warlord trait is Warden of the Ancients. While a friendly chapter dreadnought is within six inches of the warlord, add one to its strength and attacks characteristics. So even greater synergy with vehicles here and quite helpful with the dreadnoughts, giving them an extra attack. As for the strength, the likelihood is they're already strength seven and their melee weapon is going to be strength times two, making it 14. So they're already going to be double toughness seven models, wounding them on twos. 
And against Toughness 8, it's not even going to be wounded on 2s anyway, even with the extra strength, so it's not going to have that much impact. The relic he has access to is the Mortis Machina. You replace your Omnisign Power Axe for this Mortis Machina, making it strength 7, minus 2 AP, and the damage is 3. And each time an attack is made with this weapon against a vehicle unit, and they fail a saving throw, it's going to add one mortal wound in addition to the normal damage. So you gain an extra bit of strength and an extra bit of damage against vehicles, and then you're doing those mortal wounds on top of any unsaved wounds. Would have probably been easier for them just to give it damage 4 rather than word it this way. But it is really useful if enemy dreadnoughts come in for a fight against your vehicles nearby. And as your mortis will have 4 attacks allocated to it, it's going to do something of good value. Now looking at other potential relics you might want to put on your tech marine. You've got arm of the Indomitus. The 2 plus save is redundant as you've already got a 2 plus save. The extra boom can be handy. And you also get the one use only 3 up in one save. Then there's Reliquary of Gathalamor, which gives you an aura for enemy psychers within 18 inch to subtract 1 from the psychic test. And if they fail the test on a 4 plus, they're going to suffer D3 mortal wounds. Looking at the stratagems, you've got Transhuman Physiology, which won't let him be wounded on less than a 4 plus. Could save him if he gets caught out of position. If you're wanting more relics in the army list, you can use Relic of the Chapter for 1 CP. Or you can use Hero of the Chapter to give an extra Warlord trait for your army list. Especially if you want to add the Masters of the Forge Warlord trait when he's not your Warlord. So that's the stratagems I'd consider using on him. Now he doesn't have an in-one save, but with the Psyker casting Psychic Fortress, you can stick a 5 plus in-one save on him if he's within 6 inches of a Psyker. So now this just leaves Chapters. Now it's going to work with most Chapters here, but if I was to select 3 from the main Marine Codex, not in any particular order, the first one I'd go with is Iron Hands, the Flesh is Weak. Not only does it gain a 6 plus Fiona Pain Roll, but the units that he synergizes with, i.e. the vehicles, will hugely make use of the double wounds table to prevent them from being bracketed so easily. Next, I quite like the look of Space Walls. The Space Walls had great synergy in particular with Dreadnoughts. He's also given those shooty Dreadnoughts a plus one to hit in the shooting phase, so units such as Bjorn or a Wolf and Dreadnought are going to benefit. Now, Bjorn is already on a plus two, but any negative modifiers will be nullified. Also, repairing these type of Dreadnoughts can be really strong. And of course, on top of that, they've got Hunters Unleashed, which is a plus one to hit in melee, meaning the Tech Marine is going to have Weapon Skill 2 and Ballistic Skill 2. The third chapter I'd like to use him with is the Salamanders. With Forged in Battle, getting to reroll a wound per unit per phase, it's pretty handy. And also they turn minus one weapons into naught AP weapons. Both of these abilities are pretty useful, not just on your Tech Marine, but nearby vehicles too. Now a noteworthy chapter here is the Blood Angels. Of course they've got their own Dreadnought at their disposal, just like Space Wolves do, except Bjorn is more of a shooty Dreadnought, so it works much better whereas the Blood Angels are more combat orientated. The only thing left to do here now is see how he stacks up against the Firstborn Tech Marine. So this is the non Primaris Tech Marine. He's 10 points cheaper than the Primaris version, but both are power four. He's got one less wound and one less attack, but the old school Tech Marine has access to combi weapons and any melee weapon from the melee list along with pistols. Then there's the options for the Space Wolves, which have Hellfrost pistols or the Tempest Hammer. And the other chapters get options with the plasma cutter, the flamer, and the servo arm loadout. So there's much more options with the normal Tech Marine, although he's got slightly worse stats. Now there's not really an obvious choice which one you pick from the two. Both have the abilities that you really require, and both can be Master of the Forge. Just a quick note that some of the units that synergize well with the Tech Marine, apart from the obvious, which are the vehicles, you can also get yourself some servitors. Now they're only 30 points for four models in a unit. They're a little infantry unit that won't take up a battlefield role if you select the Tet Marine. Also, if they're within 6 inches of the Tet Marine, they get an improved ballistic skill and weapon skill as well as their leadership. Now, they've got access to some really good weapons, a heavy bolter, a multi-melter or a plasma cannon, which replace their servo arms, which are actually strength 6 for them. Now, admittedly, I rarely see these guys on the tabletop, but if you were to need a cheap screen for your Tet Marine, you found them for only 30 points. So tactically speaking, you want your Tech Marine screened off first and foremost as a single Dreadnought or tank won't prevent him from being charged by a Deep Strike unit or a unit that moves very quickly and can advance and charge in the same turn, such as Gene Stealers. So you will need some sort of screening unit as he's quite vulnerable and as we just mentioned, Servitors could do that job for 30 points. That's where a character such as the Apothecary shines ahead of him as it, they can deeply be hidden within a unit so he can't be charged, whereas getting around a lone Dreadnought to charge a Tech Marine is quite easy. The second thing here is obviously deploy him within 3 inches of a vehicle, so it could be a gunline tank like a repulsor, or as I mentioned a dreadnought or two that can shoot like a redemptor dreadnought. Once you've got this very simple task correct, then that area of the board will be extremely valuable to you and might end up being a priority target for your opponent. So concluding the model, he's got pretty good stats, one of your more cheaper HQs, so great for small patrol games if you don't want to sink too many points into the HQ slot. Now the main reason you're bringing him here is to have a few vehicles that need healing, and the investment of 80 points is definitely going to be worth it as I'd expect to make those points back up when you're repairing those vehicles. 
It's got a fair amount of damage output for a support character, not massive, but with the mix of the range abilities and the seven attacks in total with Shock Assault, he's going to be dropping a few models here and there. His lack of Minvon is a concern, and unlike the Apothecary, can't heal himself, so it does need to be very careful, especially if you're up against snipers. If you are up against snipers, then just make sure you're out of line of sight. So onto the rating, another tricky one here, but I'm going to be giving the Primaris Tet Marine a Planet 40k rating of 3 out of 5. It's still a decent cheap HQ option and buffing those vehicles is really handy as not many can do it, although Dreadnoughts are cool so they can be buffed with rights of battle or tactical precision. Now I'm not convinced that the Primaris Tet Marine is any better than the Firstborn Tet Marine, and in fact even upgrading to the Master of the Forge isn't an auto include if you're taking a Tet Marine. Now if you are playing a vehicle heavy list and you're playing say Iron Hands and it definitely would want to be taking one of these, maybe even two. But for other chapters, I don't think they go too heavy on the vehicles. Maybe they have one or two in a list, or a few more if you're playing a bigger game. But they aren't make or break to an army build, so for me, they're just a three out of five. Anyway, guys, that's my thoughts on the unit. Put yours below and tell me how you're using them. Question of the day today is pick one that you think is better and why, the Primaris Tet Marine or the regular Firstborn Tet Marine. Drop a like on your way out. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.